The Sony WH-1000XM5 has a long title, but regardless, these are the king in terms of over-ear headphones with active noise cancellation. And now, since I had my hands on these for quite some time now, the thing I like to do a lot on this channel is go into the settings and go into the nitty-gritty stuff, see if I can find anything interesting to create a tips and trick guide video. So if you just got your hands on one, or you're looking to do more research and see what other abilities the new XM5s have to offer, I'm going to go ahead and cover everything in today's video. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and start off this list by going with the basic stuff and work our way up to the more complex. This way everybody can get up to speed at the same time. So let's start off with the exterior structure of the headset. On the right side, you do have access to the touch gestures, which I'll go more about in a little bit. And then on the left, you have your physical buttons. Now, of course, a long press will allow these headphones to turn on and off. As well as this is your mode selector with the NC slash ambient mode. This is what you will tap to quickly switch. And of course you have your aux cable. Now with the headphones powered on and connected. If you want to quickly know the battery life percentage of your headset. You can simply just tap the little power button once. And it will verbally tell you the battery life percentage in the speakers. Now as for the right side. This is actually touch sensitive which means you can use motion gestures so a fine example a double tap will allow you to pause and play whatever audio track you're listening to and if you're receiving an incoming call a double tap will allow you to pick up as well as hang up now if you swipe forward like this will allow you to skip track and if you swipe backwards it will go back and a swipe down to top will increase the audio and swipe down to bottom will lower the volume this gives you access to the volume rocker a two press hold will actually enable speak mode. So instead of going in the app and enabling that way, you can always just, just double tap and hold. And it'll verbally just enable, let you know that it's enabled or disabled if you repeat the process. Now, if you want to quickly enable ambient mode without actually physically tapping on the mode button down here, let's say for example, you're at the airport or in a bus and the announcer is announcing something really quickly. If you actually cover the entire right side, it will quickly switch to ambient mode and once you release, it will go back to active noise cancellation. Works really well. Now for the operational buttons, basically noise cancellation and ambient mode button right here. A single press will allow you to switch between those different modes. However, you can customize it on the Sony app to make it do different things. Now unfortunately on iOS, it's extremely limited as I'm going to go ahead and show you. So if we actually go in to try to customize the different tabs to do different things, if we launch the app, here we not only do you see a brief overview of the headphone, the name, the battery life percentage, if it's connected or not, you also have the ability to turn it off this way over here as well. But if we switch to the system tab, if you scroll down where it says NC slash ambient mode button operation settings, hit the down arrow. You have the ability to check mark different things. So if you want to disable noise cancellation as a fine example, you can enable off mode. So if you want the headphone to cycle through off, you could actually have it cycle between those three different modes. If you have it off, it'll preserve a little more battery. But this is optional. This, this is all up to you. But if you scroll down to the quick access, this is where you can actually modify those two presses to do different things. So double tap. If we tap the gear icon, you have the ability to quickly launch Spotify. And then a triple tap, unfortunately, it's also Spotify. This is what I mean that it's limited on iOS. On Android, I, hopefully, you have more choices than just Spotify. But maybe in the near future, we'll have quick access to different apps. But as of right now, it's just Spotify. So double tap for Spotify access and triple tap if you want Spotify access. You could just do that too for some reason. Hopefully, in the near future, again, Sony does something to fill up that because that's kind of disappointing. Aside from that, that's the quick shortcuts of the headset. Let's go in and cover more about the system settings. Now the automatic power off, I highly recommend just enabling this. So whenever the headphone's not in use, it'll automatically power off. So this way, if you forget to turn off your headphone, you're not going to be left without a battery without any juice left whatsoever. And then this is personal pause when headphones taken off, you know, AirPods have been doing this. The Sony's have that same capability, so if you're listening to something, you remove one, it's pausing. It's going to pause whatever you're listening to and resume back as soon as you place the headset back on. And then down underneath, notification and voice. This is personal preference, you can turn this off. 
You can also change the language too. This it also includes a very light percentage voice that you'll hear. Automatic download software, and I'll also suggest uh, having this enabled. You want to make sure your headphones always up to date. And to verify that it's up to date, just tap the three dots on the very top, and just click on version. And this will be where you'll actually be notified if there is an available update. And now if we scroll back up, touch sensor control panel. You could disable that if you don't want those gestures to be going on and off. Now right above here where it says connect to devices simultaneously, I recommend leaving this on. I'll go more about this in just right now. So if you hit the that section right here, where you go down, see where it says device currently being connected. If you click on here, you can actually connect two devices at the same time with the headphones. So let's say for example, you want your iPhone to be connected and your iPad. You could do the exact same thing. So we just say, if you want to do that, you could easily do so by simply just click on connect to new device, go through the pairing process, go into that device settings and connect and all that good stuff. And when that's connected, there you go. You can listen to audio through two different devices at the same time. That's what this mode enables on the system tab. Now let's go ahead and quickly go into the status tab. Another cool feature I want to cover is take advantage of the adapted sound control. So this actually allows the headphones to actually be aware of your surroundings. So if you're sitting down, as you see right here, we te technically are casually just sitting. So if we were casually just listening to audio, the headset's going to adapt to that so it doesn't have to work as hard and preserve as much battery. And so find tweaks and settings so your sounding experience is always optimal. So that's the quick rundown, but if you tap the little arrow icon right here, you have the ability to adjust basically everything. So make sure it's on, click on the gear icon right here where it says detection of action. This will basically allow you to modify it up each profile for each different setting. So if we're walking through the city or running, let's do the walking one. You have the profile ability to adjust the noise cancellation, there really isn't much for this environment. But the ambient mode, you can actually control the level. And you can also check mark right here if you wanted to focus more on voice as you can see right here, or you can allow it to be turned off entirely so whenever you're walking through a city, it's going to automatically turn off. And you can do the same thing with other modes too, like uh, public transportation, you can modify these different profiles to your own personal preference. So play around with this right here. But if we go back, I like having automatic switch based on location. Basically, the headset will learn based off the location that the iPhone, your our device is compared to. So like we're using Sony app, so it's automatically learning our location. But if you like to register locations manually, you have the freedom right here. So you could tap on register map if you know you're going to a very low, loud area. You could tap here and it will give you the freedom to create a custom profile for that location and then on the other tab this is actually somewhat important by disabling this it'll just remove the little beep sound whenever the headset switch between different modes unfortunately it doesn't remove the notification you have to go into the notification section if you want to turn this off and then of course if we go back you have your simple media control right here as well if you don't want to use your main ios to, uh, media control settings in the sound section this is where you actually go in and actually enable different stuff so in the sound action you can actually enable speak to chat. This is that one mode I was telling you. You can enable it here on the app or on the headset itself. And then the equalizer, you can actually customize, you can actually switch between different profiles that has pre-made right here. But you do have access to two different custom profiles. So you can actually modify them to your own personal preference. But if you like to manually adjust one of the pre-made ones, you can totally do so. By tapping the gear icon, you have the freedom to adjust it right here. The 3D reality audio setup, this actually uses a third party app. I'm not really gonna go in too much into detail, but if you wanna do that, you could tap the reanalyze, follow the screen instructions. And then once it's supported Sony app, you'll, you'll be able to experience audio in 3D. Honestly, the app support is pretty limited. I really don't use this. And then on the Bluetooth connection quality, you can actually prioritize sound quality or a more stable connection. This is personal preference, but if you find yourself leaving your phone like several rooms apart of, of away from your headset and your phone, you may want to prioritize a stable connection. But if you're always next to your phone, your device is always next to you that's paired and you're listening to the audio whiz, uh, you can prioritize the sound. Personal preference once more. And then a DSEE extreme, just leave this off. What basically this allows you to do is let's say for example you're listening to an old audio track from like, I don't know, in the 1950s. It's not coming out great, it's not sounding good. You can enable that, this will basically enhance the audio file. 
but it's not good to use on modern day uh, media files because they're pretty much are they already meet the standards there's no need for this but if there's an audio file that just sounds terrible needs some improvement basically this will allow you to enhance it but if it's a modern day track again once more not really necessary it may just ruin the sound experience now just finishing wrapping things up, let's go into the system settings once more in the virtual voice assistant. You can actually enable Alexa right here if you wish Alexa to be the voice assistant for the headphone which is the only one that it supports unfortunately. Aside from that, everything else is basically self explanatory. The activity is just like rewards, like kind of like what the Apple Watch does. You can monitor the amount of times you've been listening to the audio, how many times you've been sitting, you can see the stats right here which is kind of interesting. Safe listening, your little badges awards I was telling you about that you get whenever you continue using these headset for some reason. That's the thing. And then also information you have like a list of like different things that happen with the headphone, like software updates and such. You also have tips, but honestly they really don't cover as much. But if you tap the little dot icon, you can actually reach back up and restore these settings. So if you want to back this up in case you lose your phone or something, you can back it up right here. So in case you lost your headphones or something happened to it and you're trying to restore it you can actually restore it right here so you can back up and restore just like a smartphone aside from that there you guys have it now you are a pro in terms of using your xm5s at its full potential hopefully you found this video informative and useful if i helped you out in any way greatly appreciate if you actually leave this video a like it'll help me out a lot and get subscribed especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this if you'd like to see my review comparison between the XM5s, the XM4s, and my AirPod Max, I did a side-by-side -side comparison in that video right over there. And the video next to that one, that's just a video YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Check it out. Let me know in the comment section if the YouTube algorithm was correct or, or not. I'm just curious how it's how there's they're handling this recommendation page on their end. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.